Evening, Alex. You can see that uh, this room is a complete mess. Uh, my wife and I are moving on Saturday to a new house. And uh, so our entire house is basically in boxes right now. Now, Alex, that's not actually what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, they say celebrities always die in threes, and so I'm just going to qualify uh, Fred Phelps as a celebrity for the sake of this argument. Um, because just over the past week, Dave Brocky, uh, the lead singer of the band Guar, passed away. Now this is sad for me, um, as my friend Paul is well aware, uh, I have always wanted to see a Guar concert. Um, I've never wanted to really hear a Guar concert, because it's not my particular kind of music. But I've always wanted to see a Guar concert, just because they have the most ridiculous and absurd stage show of any band I have ever heard of in my entire life. I'm sure you're familiar with Guar, but if you're not familiar with Guar, their stage show is essentially uh, if the villains from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe just decided to give up supervillainy and instead started a metal band, um, that's what this would be. Uh, we're talking like full costumes, gigantic stage setups, uh, fake blood, and all that stuff. I mean, it, it just sounds so completely ridiculous. That's funny, I, uh, I used to do an internship over at WBCC, uh, Brevard Community College, what? Um, and when I was there, the person I was interning under uh, was sort of like the light manager for the studio, and he was showing off all of his lights that he, that he had for the studio, and he was really proud of the set that he got for a really good deal from the Guar stage group, uh, because um, the lenses were burned with fake blood from a Guar concert, and so he got them for a really good deal because the lenses were totally burned red. Which, which just sounds awesome, I would love to see it, and I'm just, I'm sad to hear about the lead singer's passing, um, even if it's not my particular brand of music. Um, there's people who love it, and if, if people love that kind of music, go for it, you know, that, that's totally your scene, do it. Uh, I love Metalocalypse. I find that show hilarious, but I really could do without the, the music myself. I'm just not a big fan of, of that style of singing myself. But, you know, that's me. That's just me. Yet I like punk music, so that's strange. See, I really didn't have a whole lot planned out for today, um, just because, uh, as you can see, the house is a mess. And, um, and we're moving, and I'm doing my whole, uh, trying to do my video editing for work, so I really didn't have a whole lot to talk about. But I did just come up with another miscellaneous idea. Uh, so we talk about board games a lot. Um, so I came up with another concept for a board game, and I'm just going to run through it really quick because I really don't have an actual plan uh, as to how this board game is going to function. But uh, basically I was looking at um, sovereign states, sort of like uh, the nation of Hawaii prior to it becoming a state. Uh, so the United States moved in, um, and U.S. investors purchased a lot of land. Eventually, the, uh, the, the Kingdom of Hawaii started trying to pass laws in order to make um, their own uh, citizens have better chances of getting land and sort of protect their own sovereignty. And when that happened, the U.S. government came in and kind of toppled the government, and then shortly thereafter basically took it over as a state. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to have a game where we could discuss situations where that has occurred. Um, so it would sort of be like a historical type game where it discusses sort of uh, modern colonialism. Um, and so maybe you could have a landmass where one player plays as the native peoples and the other player plays as, um, you know, outside investors. And so the object of the game is the outside investors are trying to have the, the nation take o and taken over by the colonial power. And then the native people are trying to prevent that from occurring. And so maybe there's like a spectrum where if it goes too far in one direction, the person wins. Like, you know, we've completely eliminated foreigners or we've completely taken over the nation. Um, so I don't know how that would work, but it would be an interesting concept for a game. And I'll probably be thinking about it more later. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And maybe I'll talk about the whole Hawaii being taken over as a state sort of thing later on. Because uh, I think I'm totally on board with the Hawaiian secession. Um, I would like to see Hawaii uh, given back to the Hawaiian people. Uh, I mean, you know, there's people who own land there, and they should be allowed to keep their land, uh, even if they're not an indigenous Hawaiian. But, you know, I think it, I think they should be a sovereign nation. I mean, come on, they are so far away, it makes no sense that they're actually a state. Um, you know, give them their country back. So that's right, it's Thursday, uh, and I've just talked about Hawaiian secession games and guar. And with that, Alex, I'll see you tomorrow.